this presentation, we are going to discuss Honda's six-speed five-shaft automatic transmission. And this video is to demonstrate how to sequentially assemble the shafts in this transmission. So a lot of rebuilders out there and um, technicians as well, they know that this kind of transmission, if you're trying to um, disassemble everything, but you get the case cover out and you're going to have five shafts looking at you and those shafts, you, there's no way to get them out one by one. You get to remove all those five shafts together. That's how this, this transmission is designed and they are well meshed together. So um, this video is to help technicians out there who are rebuilding those transmissions on how to um, put the shafts together in the transmission case one by one. So to do that, we're gonna have to disassemble um, some of the shafts and then mesh them together and put them in the case without you know, needing the help of um, another technician in the shop because everybody's gonna be trying to make money. You don't want to bother anyone. Um, that's the reality of it. So um, this kind of transmission is used in many um, Honda, Honda's models like Odyssey's Accords and even their luxury vehicles like Acura TL, MDX, etc. So we're going to get going to it and I'm going to demonstrate how to sequentially assemble the shafts in this six-speed five-shaft automatic transmission. To achieve our goal here, there are a few things that we will need. For example, we need a toaster oven, a snap ring plier, a puller, and also gloves. The reason why we need a toaster oven is because um, there are many components in those shafts that will need to be disassembled, like uh, the bearings and some of the sh uh, fixed gears, as well as um, clutch packs. So, as the name implies, for the snap ring plier, we just need to, you know, remove some snap rings and also be able to remove the component that's before it. Puller, we're gonna need to um, pull some of those parts out, like the bearings that are pressed in. And once we pull those components out and we place the shafts in the transmission case, um, we cannot just go ahead and bang on those parts and you know in order to sit them back in their position. We will need to expand them by preheating them using the toaster oven for like over 30 minutes or so in order to um, get them back in their position. Once they're operated, they are going to fall back in their seat without you know, um, a, a big effort at all. This is the transmission layout. When you remove the case cover, that's what you see all the shafts together um, as I have labeled them right here. Um, the shaft that we're going to be concentrated on um is number one this secondary shaft right here as labeled and the counter shaft these are the shafts that are going to get in the transmission first um we can mesh them together and then get them in the transmission case and then um reassemble the components that go to those shafts like the clutch packs um the gears and also the bearings so um, over here, we're going to have in the secondary shaft, we are going to have to disassemble it. We're going to remove that bearing. Okay, we're going to pull that bearing out. We're going to get that uh, gear out of it and also the, the big um, clutch pack that we see right here. We're going to take that out as well. And on this um, second um, counter shaft, sorry, we're going to get the bearing out um that sleeve and also that gear i don't think that gear is pressed in as long as we get that we pull the bearing out that gear is just going to get loose and we can just pull it out by hand so this is what we're going to do right now we're going to concentrate on those and um when it comes to the main shaft of the transmission nothing else needs to be done to it we don't have to disassemble it at all and that third shaft we just need to get that, that gear that um, reverse sleeve out in the fork and stuff like that so that's all we need to do right now um, as i said we are going to concentrate on those two shafts which are the counter shaft and the third shaft 
All right, as I have mentioned earlier, the first step is to put the counter shaft and the secondary shaft together. And we can mesh them together and place them in the transmission case. But remember, we will need to partly disassemble those shafts. And as we can see right here, we have the secondary shaft, we have the bearing out, and also um, the clutch back out. And then the counter shaft, we have the bearing out and also the fixed gear. And as we can um, see, we have that sleeve. That sleeve is still in, though that's not going to be an issue um, to leave that sleeve um, in that shaft. So we have them partly disassembled, mesh them together, and place them in the transmission. That's the first thing we need to keep in mind that partly disassemble uh, those shafts by removing those components and then place them in and go reassemble them and we're going to see how we do that in the next few slides right over here we put the idler gear in right here and then after that we're going to go ahead and put the clutch back and um, secondary shaft all right you can wiggle this clutch assembly right here until it it is seated in its uh, position properly if it's not seated um, it's it's going to make those gears too high in that um, shaft and that would cause some issues so make sure you wiggle it real good that it's seated it's in its position After the clutch assembly, we proceeded by putting the input shaft or the main shaft in. Um, another thing to bear in mind is that the input shaft, when you put it inside, is going to stick out of the transmission case. You will need, if you're working on a bench, you will need to put something underneath that transmission case for that input shaft to go all its length and and sit really well in the transmission case. If not, it's gonna bottom out on that on that table. It's not gonna um, sit well. That's why we need to put something underneath. After the clutch assembly comes this sleeve. Um, we can put some transmission fluid in it or you know, some assembly lube. It would go right in. It would slide right in. So no need. Um, too big of an effort to put this sleeve in. Make sure that the sleeve is seated flush. If it's seated too high, it's going to cause those bearings to sit high and that those gears also that would go on top that will sit too high under position and that would cause noise in this transmission. So very be very careful. Make sure that it is seated right um, in relation to where the, the, the arrow is pointed in the picture. Then we have those two bearings. We have one side bearing and a bearing that will sit at the bottom. Remember, you have those two bearings to install. Don't leave them out because they are pretty easy to leave out. Um, after that, we're going to have a gear that would um, go inside, sit inside that clutch pack right here. Um, and remember, wiggle it until it gets um, back in its seat and it is well seated. You really don't need um, any issues with that. It's pretty easy to do. So once it once it bottoms out, you will feel it. Here's the top gear. Um, we're almost done reassembling the components in the shaft and the uh, secondary shaft. We have a top bearing right here that sits on top of that gear right here. Uh, this on top of this gear. And remember, they need to sit flush, just like that. So really, you gotta pay attention. Those are little details that you need to pay attention to in order to get this going real smoothly. Now we're gonna install the um, counter shaft gear uh, it's also a fixed gear um, this gear is not pressed in it just goes right in and you can see that our technician right here in the picture is not 
really wearing any gloves, so we're good. Um, but the bearing that will go on top of it is pressed in. That's why I, it's in the oven right now, um, being preheated to um, for us to just put it right in its position. It is very important for this gear, um, the countershaft gear, and the main shaft gear, for them to sit really flush. Um, if they don't sit like that, as seen in the picture right here, and where our technician is pointing his finger at, if they don't sit like that, there is an issue. Something is misassembled, and you will need to figure out what's wrong, or maybe a shaft is not well seated and the transmission case. So you really need to pay attention to those things. We're getting ready to put uh, the reverse components in our third shaft, but you need to make sure that this machined area and this rod right here is facing outward. Um, that's where the fork for reverse is going to be installed. So that machined area need to be facing outward, not inward. Right, right here we have our components for reverse. Um, this reverse sleeve is going to go in as it is in the picture right here. Then this gear is going to go after it. So it's pretty easy to be installed, um, no big deal. And then we're gonna have that um, shift fork that's going to be installed on the side of this um, reverse sleeve right here. Right here, as we can see, we installed our bearing for the outer shaft. Bear in mind that was preheated, it's pretty hot. So this bearing just like slide in its position with no issues at all. Um, we didn't even have to tap it in, it just slides right in. Right here, we are installing the bearing for the secondary shaft and this one will need a little bit of an effort, not too bad. We're gonna just lightly tap it and put it back in its position. Right, we need to check the height of those gears in relation to each other. And as you can see, we have the main shaft and the counter shaft gears. The top gears, they are pretty flush with each other. And then over here, we're just gonna have a slight difference. I think um, this um, secondary shaft gear is going to sit a little bit higher, just a little bit higher than the um, the counter shaft gear. So that's not too bad, but uh, bear in mind that these two gears, main shaft and counter shaft, they need, the gears need to sit flush, but there's gonna be a, a slight difference between the um, secondary shaft and then the counter shaft gears, just a slight difference in height.